Hey, what's up triathletes? Taryn here. We are weeks away from the big dance at Ironman Kona 2016. Stick around because today I'm going to run through the pro field of the men's and the women's race, give you the rundown of who the favorites are and who I expect to win at the show. To start off with the pro men, I think that the number one favorite to win is clearly defending champion Jan Ferdino. Besides validating his spot as the defending champion in Kona with a second place finish in behind Jesse Thomas at Ironman Lanzarote, Jan has had an awesome season. He won Ironman Dubai 70.3 by more than seven minutes, and he put in what is probably the best performance ever in Ironman history, smashing the world record at the Ironman distance in Challenge Roth by nearly six minutes in 7.35. 39. That's damn fast. And last year in Kona, it seemed like he made it look easy. He wasn't taxed throughout the entire race. He led wire to wire, virtually coming out in either the front spot or the second spot on the swim, the bike, and the run. So I think that the only person that can beat Jan is Jan. If for some reason he isn't able to dial it in, yeah, other competitors could come in and beat him. But do I expect that? Not really. I think Jan's biggest competitor out there is Sebastian Keenley. He raced in five Ironman branded events this year with a win at the Euro Championship at Ironman Frankfurt against an absolutely stacked field. And then just this past weekend at the Ironman 70.3 World Championships in Queensland, he picked up a second place finish by only two seconds. Now Sebastian always has a habit of finishing on the podium in the half Ironman World Championships in the weeks leading up to Kona, but he doesn't tend to use that as a barometer for his fitness. So is that second place finish an indication of how fit he is? I really don't know. The one thing that you know about Sebastian though is that he's gonna show up prepared to lose the race in order to have a chance to win it. He will absolutely smash the bike trying to soften up Jan Ferdino and as long as his legs are still fresh enough for the run, he's got a chance. The thing about Sebastian though is that because he risks so much, if the day doesn't come together well enough for him, he might not even finish in the top five. A personal favorite of mine who I think could do really well this year is fellow Canadian Brent McMahon, who spent the last few years dialing in that Ironman distance. He won in Ironman Brazil in a time of 7.46.10, which is the third fastest race in Ironman distance history. And you might think, oh, Ironman Brazil. He's figured out hot weather racing. But the temperature on that day was only about 20, 21 degrees Celsius, 68 degrees Fahrenheit for you US folks. And he struggled quite a bit last year in Kona. So is he going to show up and can he figure out Kona in just one appearance and then show up in his second appearance and make the podium? We're gonna have to wait and see. Other things that you can definitely expect during Kona is that Andy Potts will almost certainly lead the swim. Maybe not quite as much as years past because he's been testing out holding himself back in the swim so that he's fresher for the bike. Andreas Railert is almost definitely gonna make the podium. He's only missed it twice since 2009. And former champion Frederick Van Leerd is almost certainly gonna be in the mix somewhere in the top five because he's really figured out this race. Despite not having twitchy fast speed in any one of the distances, he's figured out how to show up in Kona, so he's always a threat to win. The one athlete that I'm really curious to see how he debuts in Kona is US athlete Jesse Thomas, the aviator. In his Ironman distance debut at Ironman Wales, he picked up a win, and then he picked up a win at Ironman Lanzarote, beating none other than Jan Ferdino. Yeah, seriously. But in his first crack at Kona, do I expect him to do well? Not necessarily, but I think he's got the potential to get there. As far as the women's race goes, I think that just like last year, it's a two horse race. Sorry ladies, I don't mean to call you horses. My pick to win is defending champion Daniela Reef. Based off of her performance last year where she was just dominant, I think it's hard to pick anyone else. She also won Ironman Switzerland by more than a half an hour this year. She also won Challenge Roth like Jan Ferdino did, but she didn't even scare Chrissy Wellington's world championship time. Like last year, she did compete in the half Ironman world championship, but unlike last year, she didn't win. What? Yeah, I know. Shocked me too. Could it be that she was holding back on the day because she's already got that half Ironman World Championship in her pocket and she wants to focus on Kona? Could be the case and it could be a really smart decision because a lot of defending champions get overwhelmed by all the media appearances in the year after their first Kona win. So she could be holding back a lot, making sure that she's fresh enough for the Ironman World Championships. That's the big kahuna of them all. Wouldn't surprise me if she's focusing on that. I think Reef's only real competitor is Marinda Carfrey. And this is a little bit strange to be saying that it's going off the board a little bit, 
but that's because as far as the Kona Pro rankings go, Carfrey is ranked 51st in the world right now. She's only raced in one full Ironman distance event to validate her spot in Kona, and the rest of her races have been half Ironmans, or is it Iron Women? So Carfrey, like in years past, has changed her approach in preparation for Kona. So do I know if she's gonna be ready, if she's fit, if she's healthy, if she's feeling good? I honestly don't have a hot clue because Carfrey has kept herself out of the big races, and she hasn't really even shown what her fitness level is right now. That said, you can never rule her out on the big island. Two female triathletes who could do well in their second appearance in Kona because they have had a great season are Great Britain's Susie Cheatham, who comes in as the second ranked female Ironman distance triathlete in the world, and the US's Sarah Piampiano, who comes in as the third ranked Ironman distance triathlete in the world. Both these women debuted in Kona last year and respectively finished a very badass sixth and seventh place. Last year, I called for the fantastically tattooed Heather Jackson to establish herself as a future contender in Kona and she did that with a fifth place finish and this year she's continued on with that with a fantastic season. She set a course record at Ironman Lake Placid and had half Ironman wins at Chattanooga and Coeur d'Alene. So if I'm picking a dark horse to make the podium in Kona, it's gonna be Heather Jackson. One of the most notable things on the women's side are three women who aren't in the field. Rachel Joyce is out, expecting her first child. Liz Blatchford is out due to injury. And Caroline Stefan announced earlier in the year that she wasn't even gonna to try to go to Kona. She was gonna focus on the Half Ironman World Championship, which she did didn't even make the podium. So there you have it folks, those are my picks for who's gonna make the podium and who's gonna win at the big show on the Big Island. I will be doing a wrap up of the men's and the women's race in the couple of days after Kona is completed. So if you don't wanna miss those, make sure you subscribe to the channel. A special good luck to my training partner and North American age group Ironman champion, Nicole Walker, who you've seen in several other videos. And as always, happy and hard training and good luck in your next triathlon, especially if it's in Kona. So cool. It's that same starting frame every day, every day.